Hello everyone, this is General Hand Grenade. Welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. Today's video we're going to be talking about ships. Um, all the different kinds of ships that are in the game Global War 1936 to 1945. Most of the ships uh, are also used in um, Axis and Allies. So uh, this might uh, interest the people who are uh, who are Axis and Allies players. But uh, there's more ships that are involved in the 36 to 45 game, as there are with all types of units. And so I thought I would make this video to show you the, the, the ones that I have, to talk a little bit about each ship, to tell you what it really was, and to show you the types of sculpts that I use, because in, in the 36 to 45 game, um, one of the big deals, one of the big things that we all do uh, as players is, is try to see what other people are using because you, uh, uh, you build the game from scratch, right? Like it doesn't all come in a box. You get the map and, and a few player aids and, and, uh, and you build it. And so, you know, just so you can see what kind of sculpts that I'm using as well. Um, There's so many different things that you can do. You know, like you could just use, like here, here's your regular battleship sculpt. That's the Bismarck from, um, from Axis and Allies, right? And then you could uh, put a red chip or a colored chip underneath it to represent a heavy bottle ship, right? Um, to, like a, the, and uh, there's the same thing with cruisers and any other type of ship. Like here, there's three types of submarines. You could use your regular submarine and use uh, one color for a coastal submarine and one color for a super submarine or an advanced submarine, whatever you like to call it. But anyway, uh, this is just um, this is just to show you that uh, uh, that you can also buy separate sculpts too, and and this is just for somebody who like me, um, my kids are grown, and uh, this is my hobby, right? Like I'm I'm not out spending money on a whole bunch of other different things. Um, this is what I'm spending a lot of my spare money on. Uh, <laughs> it's, thankfully, at this point, it's not cutting into my rent money. Or mortgage payment, but uh, uh, I, I I've managed to cut it off before then. But anyway, um, just to show you, uh, let's just go along. Like there's the German Navy. I'll get right into these in, in a bit. You can see why I've color coded these things, though, right? Like um, I did before, and, and you don't need to in Axis and Allies. But uh, like I've, these are red, these are black, these are. Uh, this is the newest one here, purple. I know it's hard to see on camera, and I was a little disappointed in the color as well. Um, because uh, I, I realized, it, like I thought it would be bright, brighter. Um, we got yellow and green and gray and blue and white. Um, it, 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 uh, there's so many ships in this game that uh, it, it would be tough to identify. It, it would even be difficult for me to identify it. Like here you can see the purple better in the British Navy, right? Like to me, for me, like how do, how do I know that this isn't a battleship? You know what I mean? Like this, this looks a lot like this one over here, right? So in order to distinguish uh, the difference between these ships, it was necessary to, uh, to color code them. Like that was just the easiest thing I could have done, right? Um, and there's the American Navy there. Uh, we'll get into this ship in a bit. This one's not painted for obvious reasons. It's just huge. And these other navies, I didn't bother filling out the rest of their ships. I just wanted to show the difference with the specialty ships that I have, like the French and the uh, the Russian, the Italian. I didn't bother putting all their subs and everything on because you get the idea after seeing all the other navies um, what, what what that's all about. So anyway, let me just uh, let me just pause the camera and we'll start with the Germans here. Okay, so we're, we'll start off here with the, the German battleships. I'm starting with Germany because they're the, the first nation in, uh, in the sequence of the turn order. So usually when I'm doing something like this, I, I start that way. I don't necessarily follow it that way. But uh, the other thing is I've got a lot of different types of, of German ships here too because of the War Plan Z. Uh, that adds ships like, for instance, here, there's, uh, there's three different battleships. Um, anybody else, I only have two different ones, right? Um, so about battleships. Now, think of the old wooden warships, right? 
like with all the cannons on the side and, you know, like multiple layers and like that. Those were the, the old wooden sailing ships, right? Um, then they, they turn, um, they decided to make ironclads after that. Um, and ironclads, well, so that, that would be a better defense, right? Like, uh, other, uh, other ships hit you and the shells would just bounce off or just explode on the side. Um, and it wasn't until the, uh, I think the first one was 1906. It was called the, the, the dreadnought, uh, HMS dreadnought, I believe. And, uh, that was the first modern battleship. If you wonder what the difference between a dreadnought and a battleship is. There is no difference. The Dreadnought was just the name of the very first uh, of the new modern design of battleships. And basically what it was, was something that looked like a ship, not like an ironclad. Like an ironclad, it was just iron all the way around it. You know what I mean? Uh, you probably know what an ironclad looks like. But anyway, ba basically what they are is just a steel ship instead of a wooden ship. Um, but, uh, you know, they weren't that effective in World War II. Uh, and really, they probably weren't that effective at any time, even in their heyday. Uh, they just, they were big and they were slow. Um, and uh, once World War II came along, and uh, air power was so much more dominant, like uh, an aircraft carrier, or even um, if you were near the shore, even land-based aircraft was so much better than uh, a battleship, that uh, there was hardly any um, battles between battleships. You know what I mean? Like there was only a couple of battles fought where it was actually battleship on battleship or uh, where a battleship was actually the deciding factor in a battle. Um, usually they were, you know, they were heavily protect protected and everything because that's just the way things were done. Um, they're, they were typically known as uh, ships of the line. That's what they called battleships, was ships of the line. And so like a battleship would have its own battle group, right? Like uh, all kinds of different ships around it to protect it. And really, you know, like they just, they, they weren't that good. Um, they, they cost a lot of resources, you know, like there were thick, uh, thick armor on them and big, huge guns and everything. But by the end of, uh, even probably by the middle of the war, really the only thing they were used for was for shore bombardment. I mean, that, they were great for that because big ass guns on them, right? But, you know, like they, they just, they couldn't compete with a, with a, an aircraft carrier. And in fact, there was only one instance in World War II where a battleship actually sank an aircraft carrier. <laughs> you probably just got lucky, you know? Um, but like we've heard of the Taranto raid, uh, that's uh, like there was swordfish fighters. They were biplane fighters. Uh, they, they sunk a battleship, an Italian battleship and damaged two other Italian battleships. Like it didn't take much. Um, what battleships were really susceptible to, uh, um, to not just to planes, but also to torpedoes. And they've been using torpedoes since I think 1853 or something like that. Um, they started using torpedoes. And at, at first torpedoes, they, they just used against ships that were in harbors and stuff. But as torpedoes became better, like as they became faster, um, and they were better able to target them. Then they were able to start hitting moving ships. And so battleships really, uh, like they, if, they're, if you're not going to shoot a torpedo and you're not going to fly, uh, or you're not going to catch a torpedo, then, um, then really, then you, all you're really that good for is shore bombardment. But anyway, let's take a look at these. Uh, but you know, the thing is the, in Axis and Allies and in Global War, the, 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 the numbers that are associated with these things, the costs certainly, you know, that like the costs should have been the way they are, but the attack and defense values, like uh, it's, uh, w when you consider that one of these things were pretty easily destroyed by a couple of small destroyers or su submarines, um, the defense values are probably out of whack, but I, I don't want to mess with any of that or anything. I, I like battleships myself. I, you know, that's why I went out and bought the extra sculpts and everything, right? Um, I don't mind that. It's just, they, they're, they were overblown. I'm just, uh, that's all I'm saying. So like this, this huge one here, this is the H44. Now that thing there was never built. Uh, that was part of Germany's war plan C, which was not implemented. If the war had gone on, like if, uh, if the Germans and Japanese had won the second world war, then they probably would have implemented that war plan C. But really by the time that that came along, 
everybody knew that the, the battleships just weren't worth the money. Like this thing here was twice the size of the Yamato. The Yamato was the largest battleship in World War II, right? And it was significantly larger than most other ones. So this one would have had twice the displacement of the uh, Yamato. And uh, if it, like you can still purchase it in this game, right? Um, just because something wasn't built during World War II doesn't mean that you can't use it in this game. It's just you're the one that has to develop that, right? Um, and there will be uh, heavy battleships and heavy carriers in this in the next version of this game. I've already started buying some heavy carriers and I've got some heavy battleships for this game just for that reason. I think it's interesting to have more different types and naval battles are really interesting anyway, right? So anyway, that's why I've gone this route. But I mean, for this thing, it's, I, I don't think it's worth the cost. I think the costs are out of line because like um, uh, it costs uh, 36 IPP, uh, like a regular battleship here. This one here only costs 20. This one costs uh, 21 and this one is 36. This one takes four hits to sink. Um, this one, I think it's three hits. Uh, no, no, I guess it's only two hits. The only difference between this one and this one, I guess, is this one goes three spaces. This is the H39 and this is the Bismarck. Uh, the Bismarck goes two spaces. This one goes three spaces. Uh, but this one here, very powerful though. You know, like attack 10, defense 10. Like it's, it's tough to miss with one of these. But you know, like 36 bucks, they probably should have caught it off at 30. You know, make it five dollars more than this one. Um, that would have probably made more sense to me um, because uh, it takes six turns to build it. Six times uh, six IPP, right? Probably five times six IPP would have been good enough. But that's something that you could change if you wanted to, right? And you can get this one on the HBT site. Uh, there's one of the very few 3D printed units still available. This one here you can get on Shapeways um, at the HBG store on Shapeways. When you're buying these types of things, let's just move over here for a second and look at this one over here, this huge one. Um, this would be a good time to talk about this before I get into all of these ships. So you see, you see these two um, here. These are exactly the same battleship, but they're from two different designers on uh, Shapeways. And, um, you know, like, I don't want to criticize the person. I'm not even going to tell you who these are. Uh, I'm not going to criticize the person who made this one. They did a great job on it. But it's not the right size for this game, right? Like, uh, whatever they were making them for, uh, it, it, I don't know. But uh, it's just not the right size for this game. So when you're looking around on Shapeways, and there's all kinds of stuff on there, um, the problem that you have is is making sure that things are the right size so what i found was uh you go to the hbg store there and you see what size like that h39 was uh look at the length of that and that will give you uh the size of a heavy battleship you know what i mean so if you can get within a few, few millimeters of that which would be this one here this iowa class um, for me this iowa class is the perfect size because it's larger than this battleship and it's supposed to be. This is supposed to be a heavy battleship. But this one here, it's unusable for me. Like, what? What am I gonna? Where am I gonna put that? You know, it doesn't fit into any sea zones. One of the things I could do, I suppose. Let me just see if I can find one here. Like, I've got these markers here for my battle groups. I could take the flag off and put it on there. You know, uh, I've got two of those things. Um, but anyway. That's uh, just a, a word of warning to you when you're buying stuff on Shapeways just to make sure that it's the right size. In the last order that I got, I'm, I'm trying to buy Jeeps, but I just, I don't know, you know, like scale, right? Uh, it's hard to tell with scale because everything is a different scale, right? You buy battleships at one scale, you buy carriers at another scale, you buy uh, destroyers at a different scale, tanks at a different scale. Um, you can't just say, okay, I want uh, a 172 scale because that's the scale for infantry, right? 172 scale would just give you an enormous uh, Jeep that you couldn't use. And so I don't know what scale to buy Jeeps in. And uh, twice now I bought them and they're just tiny, absolutely tiny. Can't use them. Um, so think of that. Um, and if, you, if you're looking to buy stuff for Axis and Allies or for Global War, 
one of the good things to do, like I said, is, is go to the HPG um, place, and that will give you a good um, a good idea of the size of something. Uh, they do have the size, like down on the bottom right, if you scroll down a little ways, it says the size. The problem is, is uh, um, with some of them, I don't think HBG does it, but with some of them you get a, a, a number of sculpts, and so they measure the whole thing. Like say you've got three battleships stuck side by side with sprues in them, um, they will they will measure the whole thing, right? Um, but length though, you should be you should be able to get an idea on the length. Look at the length and, and see where that's at. Like uh, is that nine centimeters or is it six centimeters? You know what I mean? Um, I think these are probably closer to six centimeters. Uh, whereas that white one that I just showed you there, that was around nine centimeters. But um, one of the things that uh, wasn't a, a, a bad thing for me though, was that I was looking for carriers. And you see this carrier here. Like I assume that the, the super carriers are gonna be carriers that you can put three ships on. So this thing here came with, with, with this, like uh, you got two of these and two of these, right? So I don't mind that because, uh, I mean, this is just an enterprise carrier. It's just a really big one. Um, and I don't mind that because I needed some bigger carriers anyway, right? Uh, I couldn't find uh, a, an, any type of super carrier for the Americans. And so for me, that works, right? Uh, what I did with these ones is I just, I put three magnets on. Uh, so you can see how they stick on there, right? There we go. I haven't put a flag on those ones yet, but um, I, after playing with it a bit here, uh, doing this, uh, setting this thing up, I, I realized that I probably need a flag on the carrier because they're so much easier to pick up and move when, when you have that flag on them like that. Um, especially if you don't have the magnets on your planes, like it'll just be spilling everywhere. So anyway, that's, that's pretty much battleships. Like uh, a regular battleship in Global War here, uh, like the Bismarck there, that would be 20 bucks, right? And it goes two spaces and uh, their attack eight and defense eight. Um, and, but uh, not everybody's um, boats cost the same. Like for instance, uh, the cruisers. Um, a cruiser for the Germans here, like let's just move down here now, a, a cruiser, that would be this one here, this is the Axis and Allies one, the Hipper class cruiser, that's going to cost you $12, whereas the, the out-of-box uh, cruiser for Japan is going to cost you $11. They both uh, fight and defend at the same numbers, at a 6 uh, attack and 6 defense, and a 3 movement. But the German is going to cost you one IPP more. And um, that's the same with some of the units, not all of them. Like I think the battleships are going to cost the same. But uh, um, like destroyers, uh, a German destroyer is eight, uh, a, a Japanese destroyer is seven. Because Japan was a, a warfaring nation, right? M much more so than the Germans were. Like the Germans would have been more into. Um, um, tanks and stuff, right? You know, and so like a Japanese tank costs eight, whereas a German tank costs six. And so that, that's one of the things I like about this game is that um, they kind of skew things that way. So anyway, let's talk about cruisers here. And you can see there's a lot of cruisers here for the Germans, right? Um, uh, geez, I should have... Here, let, let me just pause this for a second. Okay, so cruisers. Let's talk more about cruisers. I started there for a second. I just wanted to make sure that I knew which order they were in. Um, because uh, I don't know how many battle cruisers that you're going to need for this game. But uh, I kind of went crazy when I bought those. I just got an order of them this week. And um, I, like it, they're, they were kind of an older older piece, right? Like uh, left over from, the, from World War I. So I don't know if uh, in the new rules if they're going to treat them like um, like they did with torpedo boat destroyers and coastal subs. Like if they're just going to put a certain amount of them in the game in the opening setup and then not build anymore. Because uh, there wasn't many being built um, in World War II. Like there was the Alaska class, the Americas, they were building those. Um, and I think the Congo class for the Japanese, they, they were building those in World War II. 
but uh, most of the battle cruisers that you find were older though like uh, there's the thing about cruisers is there were so many different types um, and my like I was look, reading up on it in the last couple days here and and my eyes just started glazing over because there was just so many different types of cruisers right um, like I could see why in Axis and Allies they only gave you one of them and in this game why they only give you uh, three different kinds well two really um, before this but uh, three like you've got your your heavy cruisers uh, your battle cruisers your cruisers your your light cruisers um, your auxiliary cruisers um, there's they, they, it just uh, there's a lot of different kinds oh and pocket battleships pocket battleships uh, were another type of cruiser really um, there was just Germans that had them but that was just what they called them but really what they were was cruisers so what a cruiser is um, a battleship I, I was talking about that earlier how they were big and thick uh, thick armor and, and slow um, a cruiser was uh, something that was used more often than those so basically they, they were more useful than a battleship and that they they could go faster probably used a lot less gas too I would guess you know a lot less fuel to, to transport them but um, they were they were much more common than battleships um, and they could go faster uh, they had less armor um, than, a, than a battleship and smaller guns than a battleship but uh, you know, like I was saying earlier, with the the battleships were, you know, just because they had a lot of armor didn't mean that they weren't susceptible, right, um, to the right type of ordnance. And so, you know, like uh, battleships were great around the turn of the century, but not so great around the mid middle of the century, right? So a battle cruiser, what that was was, uh, it was a battleship basically, but it had slightly less armor, uh, it had pretty big guns. Um, and what they were was uh, something to chase down um, other boats like a, a battleship couldn't catch those other boats so they could they could go in and, and take shots at them and then take off again right um, so battle cruisers were uh, built uh, to have more uh, more protection than than regular cruisers and destroyers but less protection than the battleship uh, as far as uh, armor goes so that they could chase down uh, other cruisers and destroyers like that and um, anyway so um, I think that they're going to be in the next version of this game and even if they aren't I, I think it's cool enough to put them in the next version of the game um, and there was there was uses for all different types of cruisers right uh, they used them for different applications mostly depending on what speed you wanted to go right uh, in in a battle group a cruiser was typically the 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 anti-aircraft guns, right, for for the group. So uh, they 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 provided the cover from the planes for the battleships. Um, the battleships were mostly just big guns on them, right? Anyway, uh, so what we have here, uh, so you got your hipper class cruiser here, and then for the War Plan Z, um, what's that one called? Uh, the O, the uh, the O class battle cruiser. Um, so I got the numbers off the O class battle cruiser, and I think I'm going to use those numbers for the other ones. But maybe, maybe it'd be slightly different in the costs, because uh, like I said earlier, with the uh, the the costs for the regular cruisers is cheaper for the for the uh sorry the japanese but the the same is true for the americans and the british right like uh those are the three um nations that, that uh have the biggest navies in the game and the ones that, that use naval the most and so maybe it would be worth making their battle cruisers one ipp less but what the numbers on a regular cruiser would be um your hipper class cruiser like that attacks at six defends at six it moves three and it costs 12. so that's uh your cost uh, is over three turns so you pay four plus four plus four right to build a a, a regular cruiser um with the japanese the cost is a dollar less so you play 
3 plus 4 plus 4, and they're 11. And then the numbers are the same, A6, D6, M3. Uh, with these ones here, the light cruisers, um, I got the numbers from, was it the Leander light cruiser, I think? Um, it, there was some light cruiser anyway on the HPG site. I think it was that one. Um, anyway, so this is the Leipzig light cruiser for the Germans. And this is just a regular piece from... Uh, um, the battle pieces in HBG site, you get five of these for, you know, whatever, the 345 or whatever. So, uh, that's what this is, the Leipzig Light Cru Cruiser. So, uh, that's going to be, uh, attack five, defense five, movement three, and the cost will be five plus five. So the costs on these are going to be 10 bucks. Um, and I think I'll just leave that the same for the seafaring nations as well. But anyway, the cost for these ones here, like, so these ones are going to attack at six. These ones are going to attack at five and defend, right? And these ones are going to attack and defend at seven, uh, whether they're battle cruisers or heavy cruisers. And there's a slight difference, but I don't even want to get into it. I don't even remember now. I was just reading all of this stuff and I thought, you know, that sounds pretty similar. <laughs> Unless you were going to make a huge distinction, you know, like, uh, might as well leave them the same, right? So anyway, these are going to be seven, seven, uh, and three, and then the, the cost for the Germans would be fourteen. I, I think I'm going to make the cost for the Japanese, the British, and the Americans thirteen. So for these guys, it would be five, five, and four to build a battle cruiser, right? And for the other guys, it would be uh, um, four, four, and five, I guess. Then, yeah. So, um, so that's your, that's your cruisers. Uh, but, um, shore bombardment, uh, for a cruiser is normally two in the game. Uh, the light cruiser is at one. These guys, the battle cruiser or the heavy cruiser is going to have a shore bombardment of three in the game. Um, again, I don't know that I'm going to use all of these cruisers. I don't know how many I'm going to need for the game. And for the Germans, definitely, I'm not going to use a lot. Uh, this one here, this is the O-Class Battle Cruiser. That's, uh, that's from War Plan Z, again, like with the H-44 and the H-39. Um, what else do we have there? We have, uh, this is the Ursas, Ursas York, uh, the Durflinger, and the Scharnhorst, and then there's the O-Class Battle Cruiser. So, um, all of these I got, uh, all of these Battle Cruisers I got on... HBG's uh, Shapeways store. Um, so if you go to Shapeways and you type in historical board gaming into users, or you just go to historical board gaming, uh, go somewhere where their things are and uh, says buy on Shapeways, and so you click on that, um, then you'll see all of their stuff there, right? And if you if you buy from their stuff on Shapeways, like I said earlier, you're gonna get something that is the right size. So let's just go along. Uh, Rather than keep going with the Germans, let's just see what else we have here, uh, like the Japanese battleships here. Um, we've got the Yamato and we've got the regular class battleship. Now, even in the rules that uh, you have now, there's two different battleships for the Japanese. Um, there's the Yamato and then there's just battleship its cost. So like this would be the same as the Bismarck. So you pay five plus five plus five plus five an attack and defense at uh, eight and um, uh, what else? Oh, and it moves at two, right? Where's the Yamato? Uh, big difference. <laughs> That's attack at nine, defense nine, movement of three, cost of 25. Uh, it takes three hits to sink it and it's a bombardment of five. Like your battleship regularly is a bombardment of four. This is gonna bombard at five. So uh, other than that H-44, this is the most powerful battleship on the board right here. Uh, the other one here, this is the Nagato class one. This is uh, from H Historical Board Gamings. They're just, uh, you'll find them in the regular battle pieces, right? Um, and, I, and I already gave you the number on those and they're just two hits to sink. So as far as battle cruisers, mm -hmm. let's just move our cruiser, let's just move down here. Tough to get them all in there. Okay, so these first three here are actually heavy cruisers, but I'm just gonna treat heavy cruisers and battle cruisers the same. So um, what do we have there? That's the Aoba class heavy cruiser. 
the Tone class heavy cruiser, and the Furukatuka blah, 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 class heavy cruiser, mm -hmm. and then this is the Congo class battle cruiser. Um, I think they built this one during the Second World War, and basically what that was was uh, a, a cruiser killer. You, you might have seen on HPG's site the uh, uh, it's a Netherlands uh, piece and it's called Cruiser Killer and that's uh, basically what the Congo class was and what that Netherlands um, thing was. It was uh, that that's to go out and hunt cruisers. Um, it was as fast as a cruiser and it had slightly more armor, um, slightly more bigger guns and everything. And uh, basically these things were sent out to kill cruisers because cruisers were quite powerful, right? Um, not as powerful as a battleship, but probably more useful than a battleship. So these, that's what these, that was the job of these things. And then of course, there's your, from Axis and Allies, you got your regular uh, cruiser. I think it's the Mogami or something like that. And then the light cruiser, the name escapes me right now, but that's also in historical uh, board gaming's battle pieces. Uh, you'll find that the Germans and the Japanese and the Americans those are the only three where you can find them in the battle pieces for light cruisers. Um, as far as the uh, British ones, uh, that's going to be tough for you because they haven't had them in stock for a long time. The, uh, I got them in the battle pieces and I was lucky to get them a long time ago. And that's this, the Leander light cruiser. And it's a nice piece and everything, but um, uh, he's to this point, Doug hasn't put it on the Shapeway site. Uh, hopefully he will uh, put that on the Shapeway site and that'll be their light cruiser but uh, this is their battle cruisers that's the Admiral one there and this is the Courageous class so they're actually pretty nice sculpts these ones uh, the British ones and then up here the battleships so that's your regular battleship from Axis and Allies and again you know five 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 for cost and eight and eight uh, for attack and defense and then a two uh, as far as movement. Now this one here, this is the Vanguard. Um, I'm going to go with the same numbers because they don't give you these numbers. The, this uh, Vanguard, they used to sell it on the historical board gaming site. Now you can only find it on uh, historical board gaming site on Shapeways. At least you can buy it now on like the Leander Cruiser. But um, this one here, this was uh, uh, the last battleship ever built. I think it was built in 1944. And it was built as a fast battleship. So um, it's going to go with the same numbers as the Iowa class. So uh, not quite as powerful as the Yamato. But um, I think a 9 and a 9 for attack and defense. A movement of 3. And uh, let me just check out the numbers on uh, the Yamato here. Um, just trying to remember the cost. I want to make sure I get it right. So seven, six, six, and six. So twenty-five for the cost on these, and uh, uh, short bombardment of five. It doesn't say how many hits to sink. Um, but uh, I think it should be three hits to sink myself, though, because um. Look, it doesn't say, and uh, so this one and the Iowa class, if you're paying 25 bucks, that's the same price as, as a Yamato. And uh, there, there are three hits to sink. Unless I find out differently, but I don't know that it says that anywhere. Anyway, so that's uh, the, the Vanguard. So that was actually a pretty large battleship too. The sculpt isn't as large as it probably could be, but, but that's fine though. Like I like the fact that it's slightly larger than the regular battleship. Um, and then we also have this down here. This is, I think the 1047 cruiser. I put these in with the British because this is the Netherlands. Um, that's also a battle cruiser. And uh, that's where you find the, the cruiser killer thing on there. This was going to be built. It wasn't quite finished, but it was going to be built to, uh, to protect the money islands down here. Um, and, uh, from the Japanese and, but the Japanese got there first <laughs> and took them out. Anyway, so that's the, the cruisers and these ones here, uh, I got both of those from, um, 
from Shapeways from Historical Board Gaming. And this one I got from Historical Board Gaming. They might still have some of these left. Uh, but I don't think he's restocking. So if you want those, you, you're going to have to get on them, right? Um, same with anything that's still there. Uh, so anyway, the Americans, like I said, this one here, uh, both of these are 1-3000 scale. It's just one guy's 1-3000 scale is different than another guy's, I guess. Um, so that's the, that's the Iowa class battleship and that's your regular battleship from Axis and Allies. And they, uh, they're the same as the Japanese one. Um, movement of two, attack and defense, eight, cost 20. The Iowa class, I just gave you the numbers for those, same as the Vanguard. Okay, down here, uh, the cruisers. So I wish this one was slightly bigger because this one was actually uh, a, a large one. I got this one from Ebard because I couldn't find any American battle cruisers on, um, on HBG's Shapeway site. So this one here, I, I bought a few of these. Uh, this is the Alaska class. And it was supposed to be pretty large, like almost as large as a battleship, but it was another cruiser killer. It's a, it's a battle cruiser. And uh, so its numbers, again, are gonna be um, seven and seven and three and uh, and 13, I think, uh, not 14. 14 are gonna be countries like Germany and and Russia, people that didn't build a lot of navies. Um, and so, and then you got your regular American cruiser. And uh, I can't remember the name of this cruiser, but this cruiser here, the light cruiser, you can also get that in the battle pieces for historical board gaming on their site. And then this here, this is the Soyuz. No, nope, no, nope, sorry, it isn't. This is uh, this is this is uh, the Italians. This is just the the same battleship as this one. All I did was I painted it red. <laughs> so you know that's all you need to do, really. You don't need to go out and buy all the fancy sculpts that I have. If you want to color code your units, just just color code them. <laughs> they don't have to be different units. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, that's a heavy battleship, and that's a regular battleship. Um, this one here, this is uh, the battle cruiser. Uh, it's called a design class, 1933. That one was never built, and that's I think why they called it design because it was never given a name. But I wanted to make sure that uh, Italy got a battle cruiser because Italy does have a lot of boats in this game. It starts with a lot of boats, and you don't have a very big income to begin with. But um, you know, like it, you, you might buy a boat or two, and if you do, why not buy a battle cruiser, right? So I got two of these things, um, and that's from Historical Board Gaming's uh, Shapeway set as well. And then these are the regular ones uh, from. Um, Axis and Allies, and then the, this is just the Leander, or sorry, the Leipzig light cruiser. That's the German one. So what I did, like I bought five of them, right? I, I made three of them German and two of them Italian. Like I just spray painted them, right? Um, because Italy didn't have a light cruiser, and who cares, right? Like who cares that that's not an Italian one? Um, Italy could have lent least to, to them, right? Okay, so as far as uh, uh, Russia goes. This is the Soyuz class battleship. Um, that's uh, from Historical Board Gaming's Shapeway site, and that's your regular battleship. That's uh, that's from Axis and Allies. The battle cruiser. That's a uh, Borodino, and again, that's from Shapeways and Historical Board Gaming. And then their regular cruiser. And then I didn't bother putting anything down for the French, like all the other boats. I just wanted to show you the difference between the regular battleship from Axis and Allies. And this is the Alsace one, or Alsace, whatever, however you want to, to pronounce it. Uh, this one used to be on historical board gaming site. Uh, the picture's still there, but you can't get it there. You can go to uh, Shapeways and buy it there, though. And that's uh, basically a fast battleship as well, right? Um, probably the same numbers as the Iowa class. Um, or... Maybe the same numbers as the H39 class. That's probably better. So this, yeah, that's right. They do give you the numbers for this. Uh, this one costs a buck more. And uh, basically all it does is it uh, it goes one space further. So uh, it's still going to be um, 8 and 8 or maybe 9 and 9. You can check on historical board gaming site anyway. So I'm going to take a little break here before I go on with the rest of the boats. I need to take a drink. Okay, aircraft carriers. Now, 
aircraft carriers just completely changed the face of warfare, really. I mean, not just uh, naval warfare, because, I mean, uh, you look in today's world there, and uh, you don't even need a, an air base anywhere. You just need to <laughs> sail an aircraft carrier somewhere near there, right? And uh, and that's your air base right there. So, but in World War II, of course, they didn't have that kind of range. But anyway, um, they they really did change the face of warfare. Now your boat, its range was hundreds of miles from where it sat. It wasn't just as far as you could shoot the guns, right? Um, plus, you it's not just the planes that you could launch to attack, but you could also launch planes for reconnaissance. You know, it's not like they had satellites back then, right? Um, so, uh, not much more to say about those, like, uh, they're very powerful, right? But anyway, like this one here, this sculpt that I'm using, uh, for the Germans, that's the one from the 1941 game. Um, it's not the nicest sculpt, but it had a wide deck on it. And that's what I liked about it. <laughs> um, Germany, you're probably never going to buy, um, um, uh, an, uh, an aircraft carrier. The thing about them is, uh, it's kind of like the same with the, with the Italians. Um, wherever you're going to want to reach with your planes, you're, uh, you're probably going to be able to reach it from the land. And so to put your planes on an aircraft carrier is, um, is probably spending money on nothing, really. Uh, you probably don't need it. I could see maybe if you wanted to go somewhere, buying a small carrier. And they do have the small carriers for... The Germans, that's, uh, what do they call those? Sadlitz, or Sadlitz, Sadlitz, Sadlitz. Anyway, you can buy these on, I think they're actually on sale right now on Historical Board Gaming site. You get five of them for whatever it is, $2.45 or something like that. Um, but anyway, uh, I found that light cruisers and or light carriers in this game are really quite handy. Um, as opposed to buying fleet carriers where, you know, like a, it costs more money for the fleet carrier, takes longer to build it and everything. These ones here, you can put on the board quicker and you can put a plane on them, you know, so, so they're actually pretty handy. And, uh, I think I just painted up a couple of the German ones in the Italian colors, like I did with the light cruisers, right? Uh, you can't buy a light one for... The Japanese. The other thing you can do too, though, the the Japanese ones, you can buy them ten for two dollars right now if you buy the off-colored ones, and so you could stock your whole Axis army with them if you don't mind spray painting them, right? Um, uh, here's here's the Japanese one right here. Like, uh, it, it, there, there's not really any markings on it, right? Um, it's not that big a deal. Like you can spray spray paint that for every color in on the board if you wanted to buy all of those ones right um but the the out the allies do have their own though um it's called the casablanca cat uh, class so that's the one that i'm using for uh for the allies is this one here and i use that for all of them uh the americans and uh the british and i think uh anzac's got one I think I gave one to the French too, but I don't see the French ever buying a boat in this game. Um, like this game would have to be, go horribly wrong for the Axis for the French to be buying any boats in this game, as far as I can tell. And uh, you can buy some specialty carriers like this one here. That's the one that, I uh, can't remember the name of that, but that's the one that you could buy for a while there until they were sold out on... Uh, on Historical board gaming's uh, battle pieces there are not the battle pieces, but the 3d pieces and this is the midway carrier I was glad enough that I bought four of these um, Because after they sold out they never restocked them and I showed you this one earlier this uh, large carrier here with the, the British here I've got that uh, ice carrier And the the reason I bought it was because like it's just it, it's something I could fit three planes on right and there's, you can see the three magnets underneath there. And there you go. That's the Habak rock or something like that. So that's what I'm going to use for their super carrier. I don't think I'm going to get them for anybody other than the Japanese, the British, and the Americans. Like, there's no... Here, let me just show you over here. Like, for the Italians, the Italians aren't going to go sailing around the world. 
Let me just move up here. Like that's where they are is down there in the Mediterranean. And they're either on one side of the Med or the other side of the Med. And they can reach either side of the Med with planes there. Like they don't need an aircraft carrier. Um, so, and the Germans like, you know, like you're going to be needing money for ground troops. You, you're not going to be wasting your money on super carriers, right? So anyway, uh, there's the super carriers and the small carriers. Um, again, Russians, you're not going to waste your money on them. Um, the French, they're not going to ever get a super carrier either. Although uh, I am looking forward to getting the French set from HBG. I don't know if you pre-ordered it or not. But uh, that's one of the reasons I didn't put all the boats in here. Is because those are all Russian boats. Same with this one right here. And I'm looking forward to getting the French boats when they come in. Um, so that'll be nice. Um, so what else? Yeah, there's not much more to say about carriers. Like carriers are easy to find. Oh, this carrier here. That's uh, I got this one, the, the super carrier. That's um, I can't pronounce it, but uh, you get this off of uh, Shapeways, uh, the historical board gaming site, Taiho Kai or something like that. That's the one that is also in uh, the America pieces. Like, uh, you, um, expansion sets, uh, that carrier's in the America expansion sets, uh, on the historical board gaming site. And so that's the one I'm using because it was big enough to fit three planes on. And like I said, I only need three of them, right? Uh, what I did was I measured, the uh, measured the length of, of that one in Habakarak or whatever, and they were about the same length. And so I looked for an American carrier that was the same length and that's what I bought. You know what I mean? Um, I think that those were e -bards. So if you were to buy the one 3000 scale carrier from e -bard, uh, on Shapeways, I think that, uh, the enterprise, I think that's the one, um, see, like I got it with, with this battleship here, but I'm pretty sure that you can buy this carrier without the battleship. So if you're looking for an American one, then that's one suggestion. I don't know what historical board gaming is going to do if they're going to put some out or what. Anyway, those are carriers. Uh, I'm not going to waste much more time on them. And the same with, uh, I'm not going to put a lot of time in on submarines either. Um, there's just three different kinds of subs. Like there's the coastal subs and you can get the, all of the coastal subs and torpedo boat destroyers. Uh, that's these ones here. You can get a whole set of those. Don't waste your money uh, looking for anything else. Doug and I put together a set and it's all you're going to need. And I think it's like 20 bucks or something. So you can buy it and it outfits the whole game um, with all the subs and torpedo boat destroyers that you need as far as the old pieces like that. And then your regular subs, you're just going to use your Axis and Allies pieces. And then the Japanese and the Germans, you can actually buy a sculpt. Uh, these are like uh, battle pieces, so you buy five of those uh, for these and five for the uh, Japanese. And then for the other countries, what I did was... Like uh, here, that's your regular sub that you, you from the 1940 game. You see this sub here? I'll just turn it on its side here. Like you can see the difference from the top and from the side. That's the, that's the sub that you get from the 1941 game. And so that's the one that I grabbed and I painted uh, the red on it there. That's my, that's my super sub. Um, and I did that for all of the Allies, the Americans and, and uh, the French and um, everybody I just uh, that's all I did for them and, and you can buy 1941 pieces on the historical board gaming site or you can just go and get the 1941 game like it's the cheapest Axis and Allies game there is and uh, you can get them uh, I can't remember uh, like I've heard people get them for 15 bucks and there's a lot of pieces in there right okay so as far as destroyers go um, so what were destroyers um, they were, uh, you see these things here, these are torpedo boat destroyers. That's what a destroyer used to be. I think, uh, they came out in the 1850s and they were basically boats to shoot torpedoes, right? And that was really quite effective. You could take down any size of ship with a torpedo. Um, and so those were great. Uh, and then when the, um, this is the, the modern destroyer here. And what these destroyers were, 
were something to kill these destroyers. <laughs> like they were looking for something to hunt these down. So they needed a smaller ship that was maneuverable and fast to chase these things down because you couldn't chase them down with the bigger ships, right? So they made another ship that you could chase them down with that had deck guns on it. And that was the modern destroyer. And then they, you know, once they, they figured out how effective these were against these, then they started building torpedo tubes in, in your regular destroyers. Um, <laughs> and so then, well, what do we need torpedo boat destroyers for, right? So the torpedo boat destroyer morphed, morphed into a destroyer. It was basically a torpedo boat destroyer with deck guns on it. And then, so they had them in, um, in your battle groups, like your fleets, right? And um, they were there to protect the bigger ships. What they did was, I think they had nets or something. Uh, they were catchers anyway. They, they'd catch torpedoes coming in from subs. Um, and from other destroyers, right? Um, and so um, then they also they added depth charges to them and things like that, like your anti-submarine warfare type of uh, uh, weapons they added to destroyers. And then they added anti-aircraft guns. And they added so many things to destroyers that all of a sudden these things became quite valuable. And so, uh, so destroyers were among the highest casualties in the war. In World War II, because of how valuable they were, um, like uh, they were a target in themselves. They weren't just the the guys on the the mosquitoes on the side of the buffalo. <laughs> they were something that were that were um, worth going after, and so uh, they they the, they became high casualties. So anyway, these are quite valuable in World War II, and um, most of the destroyers that you will buy will be, or I mean that you will get will just be in Axis and Allies because uh, you got lots of them in Axis and Allies. And um, like the cruiser, um, um, they did uh, morph into corvettes and frigates and other things like more specialty items. Uh, one of these destroyers was like a, a jack of all trades, like I was saying with the anti-submarine warfare and, and with the um, anti-aircraft and stuff like that. Well, then they started making ships that um, replace those, you know, like smaller ships that, that had, did one thing really well or, or another thing. But before that, uh, they had just regular destroyers. So uh, this one here is from War Plan Z. And the only difference with this one, like this is Attack 4, Defense 4. This is Attack Defense 4. Or sorry, Attack 5, Defense 4. Uh, I can't remember which one that is. It's... Uh... Spanking cru cruising or something like that. I can't read it. <laughs> the writing's too small. And so yeah, you're you're gonna be able to get those. And then you've got your uh, your transports. And the transports are the same for everybody. And you're gonna get transports and access and allies. The only different one that I have is this one here, just because it's so cool. I got this from historical board gaming site there. And if I would have got the the more expensive kind of plastic you would have seen that there's a whole bunch of windows on the side there. Um, so that's that's the Asama Maru um, transport for the Japanese. And that's from Shapeways, the historical board gaming site. But certainly you don't need those and there's no special numbers for those. I thought about it, you know, like thought about putting three pieces on there instead of two. But I thought that wouldn't be fair to everybody else. <laughs> it would... Uh, certainly changed the war in the Pacific if you did that, right? And uh, I don't even think I included many. Um, yeah, I guess I did. I put the transports in for these guys and for these guys, the Americans. But yeah, there's nothing much to say about transports. They're, everybody knows what a transport is, and you're going to get them in your Axis and Allies. So uh, no need to, to try very hard to hunt those down. Anyway, I uh, just need to take a drink. I'll be right back. Okay, so I was just going over everything, just trying to see if, uh, if there was anything that I'd forgotten, and I don't think there is. If you have any questions about where to find any of these pieces, if you need a link or something like that, then, then just ask me in the comment section of this video. Uh, they're not hard to find, though. Like, don't just ask just because you're lazy. Like, <laughs> take a look first, okay? Uh, I told you where they were on Shapeways or whatever. Uh, just look for them first, um, and, and then... Uh, uh, I will put the link in for this Iowa battleship though because uh, that's one that, that is a little harder to track down and you don't want to get it mixed up with 
with the other Iowa class, with this big one here. So I'll put the link in for this Iowa, Iowa class battleship. Other than that, uh, these are pretty easy to track down. Most of these ships I got from historical board gaming or from Axis and Allies, and you know where to find those. So, um, so that's about it today. I hope you enjoyed this video on uh, on ships and the kind of ships that I have and where you can get them. And um, so that's about it. Take care, everyone. General Hand Grenade out.